Jesus enter into the earth. Um, and then also, I was just struck by the scripture that uh, we read, and I know someday I'm going to be preaching uh, something on Elizabeth. There is a great story in there that I haven't explored yet. And so maybe in a year or two, it will come to my mind that she needs to be reflected upon more. Well, each Sunday Advent has a different focus. Last week, the focus was on hope. In a world that is plagued with disasters, wars, sorrow, and misery, the prophets of old spoke of hope, trusting that God is active in their world and continues to work to bring justice to humanity in our world. This week, the hope moves into the announcement of John the Baptizer's birth and his role in God's plan as the prophet who is to announce the ministry of Jesus. Today's focus is on peace. It is a peace that comes when we turn our lives over to God's will. And as John cried out in the wilderness, by making straight our paths to the Lord. Today we are reading a story about God once again answering prayer and through that answer how it has benefited the larger community. In Luke's first chapter of his gospel there are actually two announcement stories going on and both of them are made by the angel Gabriel. These announcements were made to a young girl named Mary and to the priest, Zachariah, who happened to be the husband of Elizabeth, and Elizabeth is the cousin to Mary. Now I want to focus on the reaction <coughs> of Mary and Zachariah with their particular encounters of the angel Gabriel. So the angel Gabriel first visited Zachariah, who at the time was serving his year of activity in the temple as the, as the priest. And at that time of the story, Zechariah and Elizabeth are old and childless. And Paul was very brutal to the choir explaining how old Elizabeth was. But let's just say Elizabeth was past childbearing uh, age. But they are described as both lovers of God living virtuously and following the commandments of the Lord fully. And this is a very important uh, piece of information for us, for this statement rebuffs what was the general belief that being childless in those days implied that you were not somehow living fully in the commandments of God. One day while at work, Zachariah is visited by the angel Gabriel. Seeing that Zechariah is filled with fear, Gabriel says, Fear not, for I have come to you with good tidings. For I have come to tell you that your prayer for a child has been answered. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are going to name him John. His birth will bring you much joy and gladness. A son, you say? He must, he must have a wrong guy. I'm old, and Elizabeth? <laughs> well, she certainly has passed the ability to get pregnant, responds Zechariah to Gabriel. Not only does Gabriel deliver this birth announcement, but he is telling Zechariah the purpose of this to-be-born son. He will be one of the great ones in the sight of God, and he will persuade many in Israel to convert and turn back to the Lord their God. And he will go before the Lord as a forerunner, and with the same power and anointing as Elijah the prophet. He will be instrumental in turning the hearts of the disobedient back to the wisdom of their scriptures. 
Zechariah must have been thinking through all of this time with, with Gabriel saying, you know, you've got to be joking. There's no way Elizabeth and I are going to be able to have a son. God has waited far too long to make this a possibility. Zechariah then challenges Gabriel by asking for proof of who he is and just how is this going to happen. Well, this really upsets Gabriel. And believe me, you don't want to tick off an angel when they're coming to talk to you. It ticked off Gabriel so much that uh, his message was being challenged that he takes away Zachariah's ability to talk until the baby is born. Only when he writes down the name John is he once again able to speak. And he bursts out into song praising God for the birth of this little boy. Gabriel's second announcement, all in the first chapter of Luke, is to a young girl named Mary that she too is going to have a child. Like Zechariah, Mary is also filled with fear when she is seeing this angel. But her reaction is much different than that of Zechariah. Mary also questions the angel as to how she, an unmarried virgin, can become pregnant. But not in the way of a challenge. It was in a wonder as she approached and, and uh, spoke with Gabriel. Mary responds by saying, this is amazing. I will be the mother for the Lord. As his servant, I accept whatever he has for me. May everything that you have told me come to pass. And the angel left her. I want to point out, Zechariah is representing the establishment, if you will, of religion. And Mary, being the peasant girl, is kind of the outsider. She's not in the temple being able to perform priestly duties. So Zechariah represents the church. Think about that. Mary is a person in the congregation. Okay. In these two announcements, we have an aging priest who has a difficult time the establishment, trusting God's promises. A man who has prayed for years for a son, only to seemingly be denied his prayer. And then we have this young woman who hears a similar announcement, but has this open heart, a willingness to embrace the news that she will be a part of in how God is working in our world. Both she and Zechariah were filled with fear. That's okay. Nothing wrong. It's a pretty scary thing, I think. I don't know. I haven't really encountered an angel myself. Well, maybe I have. But anyway, and he's sitting in the front row, just so you know. But it's natural, I should think to be fearful when a celestial being appears to you. But the lesson here is how do we accept God's good news and our role when it involves us? Do we question God's plans and requests, as did Zechariah? Or do we, with wonderment in our hearts, openly accept and act upon what God does for us in our daily lives? Within this story of Mary's announcement comes one of the greatest assurances. When Gabriel tells Mary that she, that her aging 
barren cousin is six months pregnant, Gabriel says to Mary, not one promise from God is empty of power, for nothing, nothing is impossible with God. Zechariah, through the years of unanswered prayer, lost his voice. I wonder how many of us would react as did Zechariah. Years of unanswered prayers were really a pain of unresolved anger or too many burned bridges. How well do we trust that nothing is impossible with God. Mary's story is representing, representative of those who are not encumbered by tradition and rules, but is open to seeing her place in God's work. In her youth, she has yet to live through many of life's disappointments. And maybe this is what Jesus meant in his words when he said, Come unto me as a little child. Full of wonderment and trust. While I was serving in Florida, I came across a women's study group that was designed to help people recognize how God is working in their lives on a daily basis. In its confines of this group, these women found a safe space to share those experiences of how God is working in ordinary daily routines of their lives without fear of being seen as different or weird or, or maybe even crazy. What I observed with these women who attended this group was how their obedience to God working in their lives gave them the ability to speak out about the power and the promises of God. They had found their voice through this specific spiritual exercise. When we put away our fears of accepting the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, and we embrace it as did Mary and eventually Zachariah, then we have the strength and the desire to speak out about how God is working in our world and how God is working in our lives. In Florida, they call it recognizing God moments in their lives. I have grown to understand it as claiming your story. That moment when you have, without a doubt, having encountered God in your life. It is at that moment that you are able to sing those praises uh, about God like Zachariah and Mary did. It is natural for us to be filled with fear and wonderment when we contemplate the many ways in which God to us. One of those ways for me is looking on your faces. Because when I look out at you, I see God's love being portrayed in this sacred space. And it happens every Sunday for me. Maybe that's why I like to come so much. <clears throat> but there comes with this announcement in our lives a peace in knowing that nothing, nothing, my beloved, is impossible with God. And as we prepare for Christ's entry into our world once again, let us too illuminate the path that leads to the way of peace. 
that message that John proclaimed out in the wilderness. 